Welcome. In this session, we would be understanding the concept of coral bleaching. We have already talked about what are corals and the various theories related to corals, uh, the formation of corals. Now, to understand or to start with, we would be talking about two main things. First is the importance of the coral reefs and why coral bleaching occurs. Now, corals are tiny animals which are known as polyps, and these polyps live in a symbiotic relationship with an algae known as zooxanthella and this zooxanthella in return provides uh, in presence of light and in presence of sunlight converts carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen and it provides energy or I could say food to the corals besides providing food it also provides color to the polyp now it provides colors of various kinds like red green yellow however this algae which is zooxanthella can tolerate very narrow range of temperature so if the temperature suddenly goes up or down beyond a certain limit this zooxanthella comes under stress once the zooxanthella comes under stress, it would stop producing the food. So the first thing it would do is, it would stop providing source of energy to the corals. That's the first drawback. And the second drawback is, since it would move away from the coral, it won't provide the beautiful colors to the coral. As a result, the coral would turn white or I would say discoloration of the corals would occur. And this is also known as bleaching. So this is also known as coral bleaching. Now why coral reefs are important for us? Coral reefs contribute to around 25% of the marine species that are present. It is an important component of the shoreline. It is an important component for the fishing industry, for the tourism industry. And therefore I could say on coral reefs there are numerous economic activities that are dependent on. The major areas where you can find coral reefs are the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. Then you have islands of Lakshadweep in Indian Ocean, islands of Maldives, Seychelles. Then you have coast of Kenya. So these are some of the regions where you would find abundant coral reefs and on the east coast of United States you have the Caribbean island surrounding the Caribbean island group and the Florida Keys. So these are the major areas where you could find the presence of coral reefs across the globe. Now the important thing to note is as I said, it can tolerate a narrow range of temperature. There was an interesting study. In 2005, there was a thermal stress at the coast of United States towards the Caribbean Sea and the Virgin Island. And due to the increase in the temperature, there was a huge damage to the coral reef in that area. However, again in 2000, there was a study of the Florida Keys and due to the cold waves that swept in in the region, there was a huge damage to the coral reefs. So as mentioned before, a change in temperature, be it decline in the temperature or the increase in the temperature, both cases lead to stress for the coral reefs. Now as I said, once the algae come under stress, it moves away from the coral. However, when the temperature ranges comes back to normal, it may come back again to the coral and stick back here. So as you can see in this diagram, you have the green corals here and the white algae which live in a symbiotic relationship. And once there is a thermal stress, they move away and this leads to discoloration for the polyp here. However, in cases of acute stress, it leads to death of the coral. Now, Arthur was one of the famous scientists who compared the presence of uh, um, a coral reef to a cement industry and he said that 
since you have uh, let's take an example of lakshadweep so lakshadweep is a volcanic island with atoll formation so you have an atoll formations around which you have the coral reefs that are present and he said that uh, the inhabitants are protected by the coral reef region however if there is a shutdown that occurs for this factory it would uh, lead to destruction of the coral reefs as well so uh, it's a kind of mutual relationship between the corals which surround the island and the island group itself so that was a interesting comparison that arthur did now coming back to the major causes for the coral reef there are few important causes that we need to understand today first is the temperature as i said if the temperature range varies if it becomes too cold or too hot the corals would either the algae would come under stress and it might lead to bleaching of the coral or death of the coral then you have the sub aerial exposure that is presence of low tides and that would affect the growth of the coral reefs you have a uh, kind of drop in the sea level as well if there is lot of sedimentation coming from the coast it would accumulate in the coastal areas and it will again affect the coral population now as i said they can tolerate a very narrow range of temperature if there is a lot of fresh water that is coming into the ocean which is saline what would happen is there would be a huge dilution that would occur and that would again affect the uh, coral population here you have inorganic uh, nutrients which are present which increase the probability of disease and the susceptibility to uh, diseases so susceptibility to diseases increase in the case of inorganic nutrients then you have xenobiotics uh, they they are the creatures that kill zooxanthella and when zooxanthella is killed it won't be able to provide food to the coral then you have epizooids which are again uh, affected by the uh, coral which affect the coral bleaching if there is a lot of runoff a lot of population mainly from the i could say urban runoff or sedimentation or agricultural waste that is pouring into the ocean that would lead to uh, the bleaching and finally solar irradiance or the amount of ultraviolet radiations that are coming up now there were few major episodes that affected the coral bleaching a lot now this is the comparison for 1998 and 2002 for the great barrier reef from Dar uh, darwin to broome and it is believed that in 1998 there was only 50% of the bleaching that occurred however in 2002 this bleaching increased drastically to 60% so there was around 10% increase in the amount of corals that were bleached however the amount the percentage of corals that were damaged remained same so there were a kind of uh, episodic events that occurred in 1998 then 2002 then 2010 2016 is supposed to be highly susceptible for coral population here now how do we uh, human beings affect the coral now this is one of the very interesting case studies that has been really done to understand that how human beings only by means of tourism as one of the major activities have harmed the coral population now tourism is one of the major activities that occur in the region and it is believed that from 1992 to 2004 there has been an increase of around 1.5 billion tourists in the region uh, and these tourists who are coming in this region are using sunscreens to protect from the uh, the ultraviolet rays and this sunscreen acts as a major killer for the uh, coral population that is present now this sunscreen the amount of sunscreen that this disposed out into the ocean during this period increased from 6000 tons to 14000 tons there are two major things under the sunscreen first is the ultraviolet filters so it has ultraviolet filters which are meant to protect us but when these ultraviolet filters 
they absorb the ultraviolet rays from the sunlight but when they are disposed out into the ocean they harm the population of the corals and the other is the presence of titanium oxide. This titanium oxide reacts with the ultraviolet rays and releases H ion and electron. This converts it into the hydroxyl ion and this hydroxyl ion undergoes radical polymerization and converts into hydrogen peroxide which ultimately harms the coral reef or is a kind of uh, deteriorating uh, agent for the coral population. The other is this electron reacts with the oxygen molecule and form, forms the superoxide and this superoxide again uh, I could say this superoxide uh, protonates and this superoxide leads to again formation of hydrogen peroxide and in both these cases you have the release of hydrogen peroxide and this is a this is highly detrimental to the coral population in the region. So one of the major human impact or the human activity that affects uh, the population of coral is the tourism. Besides tourism, you have the greenhouse gases that are released in the atmosphere. That's again very harmful because these greenhouse gases that are released leads to climatic change or rise in the temperature. And once the temperature rises, what happens again is there is uh, the uh, zooxanthella which cannot tolerate those extreme ranges of temperature. Now there are various species of coral reefs itself which can tolerate different temperatures. So for example, the species that is found in the South Red Sea can tolerate a temperature range of up to 34 degrees Celsius. But the other reefs which are present in the Great Barrier, uh, the Great Barrier Reef cannot tolerate such high temperatures. So the uh, proportion of tolerance varies from region to region. Now what can we do to protect the coral reefs or to protect this region? So first is planting more of trees, uh, providing uh, less of exhaust in the form of greenhouse gases. So bringing out climate change legislations that could help, environmental control and ultimately the main objective would be to curb the uh, impact of global warming. We will be covering these topics in more detail when we will be talking about further topics on environmental geography and the further issues which deal with environmental geography. With this we cover what is coral bleaching, uh, how does coral bleaching happen, why does zooxanthella come under stress and what are the major causes that affect uh, the uh, bleaching of the coral reefs. In the next class we will be talking about the various kind of marine resources and how can we uh, utilize those marine resources. Stay tuned for more updates from exam race. Have a good day ahead.